Hello everyone and welcome to a hot edge with no rough edges. It's comfortable, it's fairly quick and it's also efficient. The new Audi S3 Sportback. So in today's video, we're going to be finding out everything in detail about this S3 Sportback. But before we move forward, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking that subscription button. You know the drill next to that that is a bell icon press that leave all the notifications on so that ways you will never miss any video updates from my channel so this hatchback and the s3 sedan are nearly identical in fact it's got everything pretty much similar except for the form factor which is the hatchback and the sedan version so let's start from the front so you get this big grill out here in this chrome design and the chrome audi rings as well the S3 badging out here at the bottom there is also this silver color front splitter there is also this slot which is just like a design covered with the plastic trim um, there is also more grills out here on either side but on this side the grill is open because it's got the cooling radiators and all that on this side while on the other side it's just covered and at the bottom of it there also you would find another small grill and then there is also this slot out here which is the like a real functional slot so air goes in from here and then flows out from the side even on the other side there is the same thing and when you come to these headlights these are l-shaped dynamic headlight cluster they are automatic so they will switch on and off on their own and they are dynamic so they will adjust the range of it and everything they also have the DRLs on top and even out here like a square shape at the bottom of it. So these DRLs on the top ones would actually convert into the turn signals as well which are the dynamic turn signals or the sequential turn signals. And the main headlight cluster is LED and it adjusts everything even at night it would have the cornery lights and stuff. So in the usual Audi fashion they are like pretty smart enough that ways to function automatically all by themselves so just like any other audis this s3 sportback is also available in one of the many tastiest color options which is this tango red and when we continue on the sides you get 19 inch alloy rims in this five spoke y shaped design out here and then you also get the brake calipers in red and the thing is this s3 sportback also comes with optional extras so one of the optional extras is this red brake caliber otherwise it's the black one and there is also the s badging on it at the bottom there is a silver color side strip that you get at the bottom or skirting and when you come to these mirrors these are silver color side mirrors with the side light uh, a small one on the on the side like a turning light and these uh, mirrors are power foldable they are also power adjustable and on the sides they have the blind spot warning there is also a chrome surround around these uh, windows and one more thing is it's just i have observed it it's just that these doors seem to just be ever so slightly misaligned that's it like just this tiny bit there's also this line that goes from the front and goes till the back like a very evident shoulder line which continues till the back and the reason it's called the sport back or the reason why it's i think for me it's the most appealing one compared to the sedan i don't know let me know in the comment section below which one would you prefer the sedan or the sport bag actually i did a detailed review video of the s3 sedan as well so you can click on the pop-up banner out here and you can watch the detailed review video of that so it's, it's called the sport bag because it's got the bigger taller form factor so instead of the sedan you would have this which gives you a little more extra boot space and stuff i'm going to come to that as well and when we come to these doors these are smart keyless entry doors and all four doors are smart keyless entry doors there is also an s plate badging on the door sills which is also illuminated now in the rear you get led tail light cluster complete led tail light cluster and the turn signals are also leds they are also the sequential turn signals you get the chrome audi rings out here in terms of the visibility now this is much better on the sport back compared to the sedan because in the sedan the roof because the rear glass is sloping which is why is a limited but on this one there's very decent amount of visibility there are some thick pillars on both the sides but it's, it's gonna be all right at the bottom you get this 
sort of design out here this diamond pattern plastic trim on at the bottom of which there is also a silver color lining and at the bottom of it you would notice two exhaust tips on either side so it's got the quad exhaust tips and i'm happy to report that these are the functional ones and not the fake ones so the thing is there is also a bit of catch so in in normal driving conditions when you're in comfort or something the two tips would only work and when you put the car in dynamic it's when all four exhaust tips would open up and that's how you will get that that little better sounding exhaust system as well and there are also these silver color plastic trims and the black color honeycomb structure type which is given out here and not just that this is just like the plastic trim and not the vents or anything there are also reflectors out here there's also a small spoiler which has been given along with the led tail light inside it and when you come to the boot space in this standard setting you can put 340 liters of luggage which is kind of all right it's not the best but it still gives you a fair bit of uh, luggage space that way there are also scuff plates out here so that you don't damage your bumper at the bottom of this boot floor you would find and here's the cool bit so you just have to lift this boot floor and then there are like holders so they will keep the boot floor in place now you have a temporary spare wheel which you can utilize and not just that this boot floor separator that you see that can also be removed and it conveniently sits on the floor it just consumes a little bit of boot space that's the only thing but it's kind of all right because you can still put that because there's a dedicated space for it or at least there's some space for it there are also tying points in the back there's also a 12 volt power socket and then you get this this net thing so you can just tie your luggage so that it doesn't dance around inside the interiors now the rear seats are foldable in a ratio of 40s to 20s to 40 so that can be done from here itself so there are levers given out here when you pull them so you can just fold down the middle armrest if you want to just load longer objects or anything but if you want to utilize the entire boot space then that also can be done from here itself there's bag on my rear seats which is why that seat isn't folding but when you fold these rear seats down completely you can put 1220 liters of luggage and the boot space is quite even that way so you can load it up quite nicely there's also no step or anything in between the actual boot floor and the seat so yeah you can just slide the objects in and out and also the lip is not that much like it's just a very tiny one so we yeah, are again loading of the objects is going to be pretty easier and the tailgate is motorized so it's going to be convenient operating it on a day-to-day -day basis well i've said this before that the audi interiors are very familiar even if you sit into any cars or any models throughout their lineup because they are just very easier to understand because the interface is very similar in pretty much every car so the recent one that i did was a very tasty audi e-tron gt so you can click on the pop-up banner out here and you can watch the detailed review video of that audi rs e-tron gt trust me that is something you got to watch because it was amazing now let's continue with this s3 sport bag this interior is actually very 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 similar in fact i failed to find any differences between the sedan and this version but let's start with the material quality so you get soft touch on the dashboard squidgy plastics on the dashboard even on the door cars there's soft touch squidgy ones and where you're going to be resting your hands that's again leather covered with the red stitching out here this red stitching like on the dashboard starts somewhere from not the inside but in somewhere in between and then it also ends in between i've mentioned that before also on the s3 and um out here also you get just the normal plastic now even out here it's normal plastic where you're going to be resting hands that's where you get the leather covered soft touch with the red stitching there are also optional lights mood lights which are given out here in the center of this dashboard and even on the door cards and those lights can be changed from the infotainment screen so when you go in you can 
go into the car settings the lights and the vision and then you have the background lighting and you can change the different colors that you have from your and there is also the audi drive select so you can leave it based on the driving modes or on the individual modes so you can just customize and do all the different changes there's also the quattro badging out here with this patterned plastic trim which has been given on the dashboard the quattro badging doesn't illuminate or anything it's just to mention that this is the car probably when the passengers sit they know it's a quattro there are also a couple of air conditioning vents out here and then two more vents which are given a little on the higher side on this one and that's pretty much about it there's also this glossy plastic which is given near the gear shifter which is why i said it's very nearly identical to the s3 sedan version when you come to the driver's display you get a 12.3 inch very crisp and colorful display and uh, on both the sides you can see the dials which show you different bit of information like your rpm on the left side and the speedometer digital one on the left side and in the center you can see your information like the date and time and then when you scroll down you can see the fuel consumption the fuel basically how much there is there is consumption and then the short term memory fuel economy basically your long term fuel economy energy consumption and the driver assistance and then you can scroll to the right and then there is the media option and then there is the phone option and the navigation option there is also uh, a view button which has been given so when you press that view button you can see the smaller the dials become smaller and the whole screen takes up with the information and everything and out of that my favorite view is the navigation because boy you have the full navigation view to yourself and then you can easily you, if you are using the navigation on an everyday you do not have to take your eyes off to see the infotainment screen but rather it's right there in front of you on the driver's display not just that you can even change the different uh, layouts of this a uh, driver's display which is the Audi virtual cockpit which is what it's called so in order to do that all you have to do is you have to go into the settings and then there is the display and the brightness and then the Audi virtual cockpit and then there is the S performance you can change it to that or the dynamic you can change it to that as well but the dynamic seems to me a little confusing i like the s performance rather nice cuz yeah it's much more sportier you can even co configure any of these dials from sport s performance to dynamic and change the information that you see on the left gate so you can change all of that from here so when you come to the steering wheel this is a leather covered half perforated steering wheel with the red stitching and it's also got the s badging it's also the flat bottom steering wheel and the steering wheel is manually adjustable which is your tilt and the telescopic so you can get the right yeah it of it and there are also paddle shifters which are given out here which are slightly tiny ones that way but and the rest while driving they are quite easier to use the, on the right side you would find the controls for your entertainment and all the infotainment controls and the communication controls all of that is given out here there's also a star button which can be customized from from your infotainment screen what you want that button to do and on the left side there are buttons given for the different settings that you can change on your driver's display the views and the information that you see and on this s3 sportback you also get the optional adaptive cruise control so that stick is given on the left hand side behind the steering wheel which is quite easier to read and to see there's also the speed limiter which is given these the mood lights also were optional as a part of the optional package so the adaptive cruise control and the mood lights are both a part of it so that's the adaptive cruise control stick for you now when you come to the air conditioning control straight forward button operated air conditioning system has been given so straight on and off button has been given and then you can adjust the fan speed and then in the center you can leave the aircon to eco max on or off and then the both the sides you would find the buttons to change the temperature i'm still glad that everything is button operated and not the the touch screen operated because it's just more easier like this and there are also more buttons to change the flow of air and everything so that's pretty much your air conditioning system right there and pretty easy now when you come to the infotainment screen this is a 10.1 inch colorful display it's pretty snappy so when i go and 
yeah try to jiggle around some menu options it's pretty decently quick and there's not much lag i would say and on the main screen you would find the widgets for your media telephone and your navigation and then you can even change them by long pressing them but when you go to the main screen you have the radio option your media option so in terms of the media you when you go inside the sources you will find your connectivity option so in terms of the connectivity you can connect to this infotainment system using the bluetooth usb and there is also wireless android auto and apple carplay and when we continue into the menu you have the telephone option then the navigation that is inbuilt navigation system as well so in case you're not going to be connecting the android auto or apple carplay because then you will use the google maps but if not there are also maps which are given which are fairly quick and the yeah they don't have any lag or anything and they have good amount of uh, ability to search for various destinations as well once we continue then there are phone apps where you will find your android auto apple carplay connectivity then the detailed car settings in which you will find your audi drive selects where there are different driving modes going to come to that there is also the efficiency assist the ac the lights and the vision where you can change all your exterior lights background lights and the parking aid feature then the driver assist in which you can change all your uh, safety systems which are given out here lane departure warning and all of that then the settings and the service and the favorite option when we continue next there is also the favorites option and then the settings option in which you will find all day to day settings like your general settings where you can change your date and time units and all of that stuff then the display and the brightness as i mentioned then the sound setting the system maintenance the connected device entertainment and then when you scroll navigation telephone contacts messages privacy notifications and the announcement and not just that there are shortcut buttons given on the left side for your home your media like radio then the media the telephone and the navigation so on the move you can easily access them and also there are drop down menu options so in that you will find your sound options your wifi and even if you have any warnings or anything they would pop up out here so that's the infotainment screen for you now in terms of the charging you get two usb type c ports which are given in the front underneath the air conditioning controls and a wireless charger which has been given but that wireless charger faces on the other side and not towards you so you have to be sure that it's charging just that's the only thing there's also 112 volt power socket this is also an optional extra which has been given a uh, 12 volt power socket out here and inside the hand box there is nothing while there is also one 12 volt power socket which is given for the rear passenger now when you come to the storage you can put about 1 liter worth of bottle in the door cards and some more storage on the sides there is also this storage which you can utilize which is your wireless charger for your uh, wallets and phones and everything there are also so these two cup holders which are given but the cup holders are flexible ones and also foldable ones so you have to fold down these rings and then you have a proper cup holder out here but if you're not going to be using that and you want to utilize it to put your phones and wallets you can fold these rings and then you can utilize this entire cup holder there's also a slot given for your key which has this rubber pad on it there is also this center armrest in which you can again put just your phone and a wallet that's about it and this is also a slideable one so you would cover one of your cup holders when you do that there is also this glove box which is given which is covered with this nice velvet lining as well it's decently sized there is also more storage on the other side like next to the steering wheel where you can put your phones or wallets i think you can just put your wallets and that's about it and in the back again you can put like 1 liter worth of bottle in both the door cards and there are also two more flexible cup holders which are given in the center armrest now on this audi s3 sport bike you get bang and olufsen surround sound system and it actually sounds pretty incredible and not just that on this s3 sport bike you also get a normal sunroof but it's pretty big that way so i like the fact that though it's just the normal size but it's still quite decently big because it makes the cabin feel pretty airy and not just that there is also an sos button which has been given it's like an emergency button which is now pretty much a legal requirement for all the cars in the uae so when you press that button if you are in an accident if you need an emergency medical assistance then you can press that button and 
and the help is sent to your way using the GPS coordinates of your car. Now on this S3 Sport bag, there is also this touch pad and actually like a dial which has been given for your volume which you can like swivel and then you can increase the volume of the infotainment and then there are also mute buttons, the power button and the traction button. This is pretty much easier while you are on the move and that dial just does that one function of controlling that infotainment screen and nothing else. There is also this switch which has been given so instead of the gear lever now you have the switches so that is a, an easier way but it's still a lot more easier because it's protruding out because in some of the cars the recent one that i did was opel mocha so you can click on the pop-up banner out here and you will find that the gear lever was mounted right inside like the switch which is like way below the surface of this center tunnel so you can check and watch that review video so this is fairly easy to use you can just put it in the reverse and then you can put it in neutral and then the drive and it's quite easy and handy also when you're driving this handrest is also right out here there are also more buttons which are given underneath the air conditioning controls for your drive select your traction control your auto start stop feature there's also the parking assist and also the parking sensors that you can switch on and off and in terms of the driving you have five different driving modes which is your efficiency the comfort auto you can leave the car on that and let the car figure out then there is dynamic and then there is the individual mode inside the individual mode you can customize your drive system the steering and the engine sound so the moment you put uh, the car on the individual or the dynamic mode you can actually hear the car change its exhaust note completely now when you come to these seats the s3 sport bag comes with the napa leather seats in the black color with this diamond quilting in the center and even in the bottom and there is also the s badging which is again an optional extra on this s3 sport bag and these are the sporty seats but i still find them pretty comfortable for everyday use because they are they, they are quite broad that way and they offer ample of support underneath the tie as well and not just that the support underneath the tie is extendable manually so you can extend that during the longer journeys and that gives you that extra bit of support underneath the tie as well and even the lumbar support is pretty decent i would say there are also nice bit of side supports on the back and also at the bottom as well and this seats also have the red stitching on them and the driver's side seat is eight way electronically adjustable and four way lumbar control while the passenger side seat is also eight way electronically adjustable and four way lumbar control but these headrest on the s3 are the fixed ones so that might create a little bit of an issue for the rear passengers because they wouldn't be able to see what's going on because of these fixed headrests now out here in the back of the s3 sport bag things are rather all right i would say because in the sedan version because the roof line is sloping which is why the head space was slightly congested but on this one there is fairly decent amount of head space there's also a cutout which has been given which gives you that additional bit of head space as well so i'll just say about four fingers out here so someone about six feet will be able to adjust in here as well there's also decent amount of knee room as well and there are also cutouts given on the driver and the passenger side seat so they give you that additional bit of room as well and you can just about slide your feet under the seats not much that way because yeah the seats are already pretty low so it's gonna be pretty tight that way but nonetheless you can still do that during the longer journeys although these seats feel like you they are slightly on the lower side and they are much more closer to the floor which is why you see the angle so sometimes i feel like i'm missing the support underneath the thigh in the front end and plus these seats are pretty upright that way so you just sit quite upright all the time and you cannot adjust on anything on this one while on this s3 sport bag the rear seats are also the napa leather black color seats and they also have the same diamond stitching at the bottom and even in the backrest with the red color stitching as well and the middle seat also doesn't have any bump or anything so when i sit in the center yeah things are all right but although you feel quite a bit raised and also the support in the back it's a little bu buffed up so that's why you will feel that when you are sitting in the back so during the longer journeys 
yeah the middle passenger isn't going to be very comfortable because the either side seats are still the sporty type of setup which is why they have that uh, bucket type of setup also on either sides and there's also a bit of a tunnel out here so because this is a quattro all-wheel drive system which is why there is slight bit of tunnel out here it's covered with the carpet lining and also in the back you get two air conditioning vents and a dial to adjust the temperature that's about it so you get tri-zone air conditioning system which is an optional extra again on this s3 sport bag there's also a 12 volt power socket and in terms of the quality in the back in the door cards it's the normal plastic that now returns in these door cards even at the bottom and everywhere we are going to be resting hands that is just about soft and in terms of the storage you can put about one liter water bottle and some more storage on the sides there is also these netted storage which are given in the driver and the passenger side seat and which is what i was saying the headrest is fixed so gives you very limited visibility in the front except from when you lean and just see it from the middle and there is also this hand rest which has been given and i really like this hand rest because it's pretty broad and there are two cup holders which are given in a vertical fashion arranged they are flexible ones but on either side you can still rest your hands and then you can utilize this hand rest to store your drinks so that is one cool feature and you can even access as i mentioned from here where's the button yeah so when you drop down this hand rest you can easily access anything from your like if you want anything from the boot space but overall i think yeah it's, it's fairly decent compared to the s3 sedan which is what i feel because the space arrangement is rather nicer on this especially with the head uh, room that gives you that extra bit of visibility and airiness also on this s3 sport bag so just like the s3 sedan this s3 sport bag is powered by the same two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 290 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque while this same very engine and gearbox combination is also available in the new golf gti and this engine is mated to a seven speed astronic transmission while you get the fabulous quattro all-wheel drive on this s3 sport bag actually it's a pretty useful one because the the quattro system is just pretty brilliant because it helps in so many things it helps in handling it helps in yeah just day to day makes it very easier but let me come first to the engine now i'm driving currently in the comfort mode and i feel like there is like always that bit of lag at the lower end until the engine crosses like 2000 rpm till then it's slightly sluggish in terms of its uh, power output but the moment it crosses those 2000 really picks up but it's still always fairly quiet and muted so not to change all of that just put the car into dynamic mode or the individual mode and you can immediately sense the exhaust valves open up and now you can hear that there is like a proper whisk bomb cracks and bombs which are happening in the back lots of it now and now in the dynamic mode the engine starts to feel pretty responsive although still at the lower end let me show you it still feels a little delayed in terms of the response but yeah once it crosses that 2100 rpm it's super responsive when you come to this gearbox it's pretty smooth it's pretty flawless it's it's very easy to use even though when i'm in the dynamic mode it's just not jerking it's very easier in fact when i use the paddle shifters yeah i just don't feel the difference between the two gears when they shift because it's just very seamless so that way the transmission part is pretty good although just that lower end improvement in the the torque and the power delivery if that can be improved this this is very good now when you come to the suspensions it's slightly on the firmer side i believe because you get the s suspension package on this sport bag which is why you get a little harder package firmer setup on this one so let me do actually a slalom and show you but even though i still feel there is slight bit of 
roll that is still there so there is there is still softness bear in mind for everyday use it's not like it's going to be completely hard but yeah the moment you go at a higher speed you feel that they feel a little firmer but it's all right for day to day use especially with these leather seats now when you come to the steering this is an electronic steering now and it's decently progressive i like how they feel there is good amount of weight to it but a little more feedback yes a little more feedback would be rather nicer but when i yeah so the steering itself is fairly responsive but it's just that sometimes it fails to communicate what's going on in the front but otherwise you just have a very brilliant steering setup also because it's so well balanced and i like it that it's well weighted especially when you put it in the dynamic mode uh, it's it's got a little bit extra weight to it even the throttle response improves so let me show you when i put it and that all wheel drive quattro all wheel drive yeah that's just taking care of all the traction needs and the steering is taking all the care of where i want to go so that's a win win situation and everything working well in synergy now when you come to the noise and the vibrations they are pretty well kept in check because there is only some bit of uh, leaking air from here that's about it wind washing but otherwise it's fairly quiet the only noise that you will hear is when you put this car in the dynamic mode and you will hear those cracklings in the exhaust right now i don't know if my microphones are picking up but there is some bit of activity going on it still feels slightly muted but i'll be fine with this as well now when you come to the brakes you have again s performance brakes on this s3 sport bag and let me do a 100 to 0 emergency brake stop that gripped really well by the way and i don't know if i've done a few runs before which is why it's gripping very well but my god they are they are pretty good they are they have good weight to the pedal also and they are firm they are grippy but all in all very good there's also emergency stop signal and not just that the the seat belts are also they have the tensioner so once you brake hard they automatically increase the tension so that you don't go ahead when you break that and do those sudden maneuvers now when you come to the efficiency from this 2 liter engine so you will get anywhere between 9 to 10 kilometers per liter inside the city and when you are going on a longer runs you will get around 10 to 11 kilometers per liter which is pretty decent for a hot hatch now when you come to the safety systems on this s3 sport bike you get six airbags two for the front driver and the passenger two side airbags again for the driver and the passenger two side airbags again for the driver and the passenger and also for the rear passengers and there is also child isofix points in both the rear seats there is also a single camera reversing system and it's all right the output from that is pretty decent it's not lagging it's just a can be a little more crisp because the screens are so good so the output can be improved that way there is also abs there is also emergency stop signal which i had shown there is also traction control system there is tire pressure monitoring system there is also the optional front and the rear pedestrian warning if there is anyone in the front and also the traffic alert and everything so all of that is there there is also lane keep assist there is also lane departure warning that's also there there is also the belt tensioner which is automatic when you brake suddenly it just holds you into the seat properly so all these safety features are all given part of the german package and when you come to the pricing so the s3 sport bag standard one will cost you around 180 1000 dirhams while this spec up little spec up one will cost you 202000 dirhams and the thing is for a hot hatch bag i feel like it's still in the right range because let's be honest the s3 does behave like a grown up hot hatch and it's also posh it's also fast 
and for everyday use it's ample i mean it's very fast it can change its nature if you want to drive it in comfort you can do that and if you want to drive it in in a fun way then there is also the dynamic mode there's also the efficiency mode that you can switch to so there are lots of options available like that and it just gets it feels very sophisticated also when you look at it from the outside or when you see it on the inside the interior is so well sorted so all of that if you just merge it into one thing and let's not forget that you can take this around and you can impress your friends as well so i think it offers a pretty great value in terms of the hot hatch category i mean no of course the other hot hatches are just look wise they are pretty good they are also pretty fast so this is something where if you want something like a balanced hot hatch i think this is the one that you will definitely like it and for that you should check this car out anyways that's pretty much it for this video give this video a thumbs up and thank you for watching this video and if you want to subscribe to my channel then you can click here and if you want to watch more videos then click here i shall see you in the next video bye bye take care and stay safe